the hog, the shrew, and the hullabaloo. It was night in the village, a still dark night, and Harry the hog was sleeping tight. In her house at the foot of Piggyback Hill, also asleep, was Candy Stripe Lil. Now Harry the hog was a champion sleeper. No other hog could sleep longer or deeper. That night he'd finished his exercise. Two hog jumps, three sit-ups, four blinks of the eyes. And at last he was snug in his blankets again, happily dreaming his hog dreams when... Scritch, scrump, crunch, skiffle, screech, kazoo! He heard the most terrible hullabaloo. Help! shouted Harry, at once wide awake. That's the noise a monster would make. He reached for his phone, and trembling still, he called up his best friend, Candy Stripe Lil. When Lil arrived, she took off her jacket. We'll soon find out what made such a racket. But for now, she said, we must try to rest. If I can, Harry said, I'll do my best. Then, shh, squeaked Lil. I heard a scuffle. What is that making such a kerfuffle? They ran to the window, lifted the latch, and opened it. There, in the cabbage patch, in the midst of the murk, they could just make out the black and white stripes of a badger's snout. Hello, called Lil. A scuffle, a crunch. Hello there, said Badger. I'm just having lunch. I often feel peckish at this sort of time for a beetle or two and a sip of slug slime. Harry looked at Lil and shook his head. That wasn't the sound I heard, he said. That's only the sound a badger can make. It was something much scarier that kept me awake. So they crept up the staircase, bedward bound. The house was creaking all around. Up they went through the not-quite-light, through the in-between of day and night. Then, shh, said Harry. I heard a cry, somewhere outside, in the moon-pale sky. It came again, screech! This time Harry fled and burrowed snout first, under the bed. Lil climbed up the curtain stripe by stripe and peeped through a hole near the water pipe. Very close on the branch of a silver birch, a busy barn owl had come to perch. Hello there, squeaked Lil. You gave us a fright. I'm just working, said Owl. During the night, there's so much to do. And she heaved her chest. I've stopped to give my wings a rest. At once, Harry wriggled from under the bed. That wasn't the sound I heard, he said. That's only the sound an owl can make. It was something much wilder that kept me awake. So back they went, through the not-quite-light, through the in-between of day and night. This time they almost made it to bed. Good night, said Lil. Good night, Harry said. Lil put on her bed socks, pulled them tight, and was reaching up to switch off the light when, shh, said Harry, I heard a crack somewhere down there in the shadowy dark. Down they rushed to the locked front door, and very gently, paw by paw, Lil climbed on to Harry, still in her socks, and together they peeped through the letter box. There by the pond on a large flat stone, a frog was croaking away on his own. Hello, called Harry. Crack, Frog replied. How I love to be out by the waterside on a night like this with the stars above and sing serenades to my one true love. Harry looked at Lil and shook his head. That wasn't the sound I heard, he said. That's only the sound a frog can make. It was something much fiercer that kept me awake. It was almost dawn when they made it to bed. It looks like the monster's gone, 
Lil said. Out in the garden, all was still. Not a wisp of a whisper was heard until, with a scuffle, a screech, and a crark, crark, the strangest sound came out of the dark. That's it, Harry cried. That's the sound I heard. Too fierce for a frog, too wild for a bird. I suppose we should take a look, said Lil, and quickly she climbed up onto the sill. In the glow of the moon, in its silvery sheen, was the ugliest shape you've ever seen. What is it? gasped Lil. What on earth can it be? She opened the window and leaned out to see. Slowly, as the sun rose over the hill, the strange-looking shape became stranger still. They looked, then stared, then stood there agog as the shape became... Badger and Owl and Frog. Owl was screeching, Frog was croaking, Badger was rootling, scraping and poking. What a racket, cried Harry. What a parade. Surely that can't be what made me afraid. A silly old badger, an owl and a frog. It takes more than that to frighten a hog. And he climbed back into his bed with a yawn. Poor Harry, laughed Owl, but now it's past dawn. The three of us must get to bed. Goodbye then, said Lil. Good night, Owl said. Owl and her friends had just snuggled under when a noise shook the air like the rumbling of thunder. From deep in the house, behind the closed door, Harry the hog had started to snore.